much for coming uh, for the Latino celebration this year. We are delighted to have uh, Dr. Patricia fernandez Kelly. She has a, a PhD in cultural anthropology, and she teaches at the Department of Sociology, and is also associated with the Office of uh, Development, uh, Population Development at Princeton University. Uh, Dr. fernandez Kelly has written uh, on many areas. Some of the areas are economic development, immigration, and uh, the global economy, women in the labor force, and also uh, Latinos incarcerated in U.S. prisons. Welcome and delighted. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Elizondo. Uh, I first would like to thank uh, Professor Juan Orbe and Ms. Edna Spencer. Uh, they have been just so wonderful that I'm thinking about moving uh, to this uh, institution. Uh, thank you also, Jonathan Paris. Uh, you have a great presentation of self. Uh, and I appreciate your hospitality. I'm actually feeling a little lonely when behind the podium. Um, and um, if it were up to me, I think I would move closer in order to connect more directly uh, with uh, you who are here. Uh, but I think I'm going to stand here particularly because there are so many people on the side that it's probably better that way. I can't tell you how excited I am to be here. First of all, because I've been treated with enormous amount of consideration by your professors and by Ms. Spencer but also because this is a breath of fresh air. I have to confess to you that living at, uh, in Princeton, New Jersey, and being a professor at Princeton University is a wonderful experience, and I am not complaining here, but it lacks a little bit of an element of reality. I mean, at Princeton, I am dealing with students that I basically want to shake away uh, from their bubbles of complacency. Uh, here, I am confronting an audience in which many of you, the students, are actually holding down jobs and at least partially supporting families. And so to me, it's a bit big treat to be in the real world as opposed to the bubble of privilege uh, that is uh, Princeton. Now, let's not completely uh, dump on my students who are wonderful. Uh, that's not my intention, actually. What I see as a problem is that many of them will actually graduate and go on to occupy positions of privilege and uh, will work in environments in which they will be able to affect the lives of many, many thousands, perhaps even millions of people. Several presidents and congressmen have uh, attended Princeton and other Ivy League institutions, and uh, we know how living in uh, bubbles of privilege uh, may actually prevent you from seeing very obvious things that are happening on the ground. And so my mission there is to tell them about the world of reality, which I know mostly through um, the research, and uh, to make sure that someday I won't have to wake up when I'm 87 and notice that one of my students went on to make really stupid decisions because he was not or she was not provided with adequate information. Here, my challenge is different. My challenge, uh, and I'll do almost everything, uh, perhaps uh, other than tap, dance on the podium, is to provide you with uh, some information about uh, relevant issues of immigration. I really want my presentation to connect with your own concerns and provide you with a working understanding of where we are um, in the question of immigration in this country. I'm planning to speak for about 35 to 40 minutes. Yeah, fair chance. Uh, and no, I will. I'm actually pretty good about that. And then I hope that you will be gracious enough to give meaning to my life uh, by asking questions and by uh, providing me with an opportunity to engage in the dialogue. So the subject of my presentation is the title, that is, is to welcome the stranger, myths and reality of illegal immigration. Now, let me ask just uh, uh, for my own information, are you aware of how volatile and divisive the subject of immigration is at this point in, in the United States? Can I have a show of hands? 
or is this a new subject for you, about half of you? So then my mission is twofold. Uh, one of them is to provide those of you who are already aware of uh, the uh, debate on immigration with additional information based on research. And those of you who are not aware of this, uh, I invite you to become more involved because it is a major uh, problem, a major problem for particularly immigrants, as you'll see in a moment. The title of my presentation, the, To Welcome the Stranger, uh, is suggestive uh, because the United States has had a tradition and a history of inclusion of immigrants. Now, this is a two-fold story. On the one hand, uh, we glorify and often romanticize our immigrant past uh, as uh, represented by the Statue of Liberty, uh, thinking uh, fundamentally that people from various parts of the world have come into this country and eventually uh, worked very hard uh, struggled, uh, suffered, uh, often disrespect and exploitation, uh, but uh, have overcome all kinds of obstacles in their route to assimilation. Assimilation is a word that is meant to designate a process by virtue of which uh, uh, existing national differences or cultural differences are gradually erased as people become part of the great American nation. That is one side of the story. but. There is another equally glorious but forgotten part of, of this narrative, and that is that most immigrants have come to this country as workers. Whether they were Irish or Polish or Italian uh, or from Eastern Europe, uh, Jews, etc., they came to this country as bearers of uh, very inexpensive labor. And I try to remind people that migration to this country uh, was originally recruited and continues to be recruited uh, at, at this time. Uh, those workers, uh, as uh, anyone who knows a little bit about labor history in the United States, which I happen to be passionate about, uh, will know, uh, was a story fraught with conflict. Because after all, uh, the great secret of this country has been that it's both uh, a, a, a place in the world where major and fantastic institutions of constitutionality, democracy, public participation, suffrage, etc., have existed, but it is also one of the places in which market uh, capitalism has acquired some of its most competitive and often cruelest uh, uh, dimensions. And so this tale of, on the one hand, high aspirations in terms of participation, political inclusion, and on the other hand, exploitation and disrespect coexist, it, it, it have existed throughout the history of the nation. And so here, I want to maintain that context uh, in, in mind as I um, discuss uh, the situation of immigration at present. And, and here, I'd like to start by providing you with a vignette. In fact, I'd like to organize my presentation around two vignettes. Uh, which are part of my life. Uh, I chair an organization called the Latin American Legal Defense and Education Fund, LALDE. Now, you'll have to take my word for it when I tell you that, that I've been in this country since 1976. And at no point in my life did I ever feel a desire or an interest to join an immigrant organization. And the reason it's obvious I was privileged to grow up in Mexico City um, and was exposed to all kinds of fabulous education. I had extraordinary uh, uh, teachers and professors. And when I came to this country for personal reasons, that is, I married an American citizen, it never occurred to me to think of myself as an immigrant. Uh, it occurred to me to think of myself as someone who was making a contribution to a society that I was well acquainted with. And so for the remainder of that period, almost uh, in its entirety, I never saw myself as a minority or as an immigrant. Yes, I realized that you know institutions of higher learning uh, have this uh, custom in which they associate physical appearance and national origin with minority status.